Will the real Cosmo please stand up? Today we're taking a look at the long, murky and fabulous history of the Cosmopolitan cocktail. What was it like originally? How it evolved? And what made it so popular? I'll name drop a lot of people that are or claim to be responsible for this drink. But we'll also look at three recipes that you should know when talking about the Cosmo. And this is actually not one of them. This is a kamikaze, a mix of vodka, triple sec and rose slime, to which Neil Murray added a bit of color with sweetened cranberry juice. Being the only black bartender at the bar, he famously said he wanted to add a bit of color to the cocktail. When somebody tried the cocktail, they said, How cosmopolitan? That was in Minnesota, in the 70s, but the drink is also said to have originated in California, Massachusetts, Florida and finally New York. But all of those came about some 40 or 50 years after the original cosmopolitan. We'll start with that, after the intro. If you make it to the bottom of the glass, let me know in the comments. Now, it's Cosmo time. The story of the 1934 Cosmopolitan actually starts in 2006 with none other than York Mayer, a friend of the channel and the creator of the Jim Basil Smash. Back then he was browsing a blog by a well-known couple in the spirits world, Anastasia Miller and Jared Brown. With a bit of digging, he found a copy of the 1934 Jean cocktail book, published by the American traveling mixologists. No photo of that book to show you, but I'll link the article that goes into even more detail. But in that book, York noticed the recipe for the Cosmopolitan, made as a gin daisy cocktail, much different from the then popular vodka triple sec, lime and cranberry Cosmo. It's now called the Cosmopolitan 1934. Even then, it had orange liqueur in it, making it a daisy, but it was additionally sweetened with raspberry syrup, so the pink color was already part of the original Cosmo. I'll be using raspberry gum syrup from our friends Library Co. They're calling this the purest raspberry syrup on the market, which is a bold statement, but it also has a bold, sweet tart flavor. This rich and silky syrup that's bursting with raspberry flavor will make a wonderful version of the Cosmopolitan. But first, let's start with the spirit. The recipe calls for a jigger of Gordon's London Dry Gin, but I don't have that in stock currently, so be fitter it is. A jigger equals 2 ounces or 60 ml. Next up, 2 dashes of control. Hard to know how they measure that, but let's say that's a heaping bar spoon. Next, instead of lime, the original Cosmopolitan called for a juice of one lemon. Squeeze that straight into the shaker. And lastly, a teaspoon of raspberry syrup. Daisies were more often made with grenadine syrup, but variations with raspberry syrup can be found as early as the 1908 gin daisy recipe from Jack's Manual. Then add ice, shake well to chill and dilute, and strain. The recipe called for it to be served in a glass number 4, but I couldn't find what it was, so I'm just using an old cube glass, as you saw in the intro. No garnish mentioned, so let's give it a taste. Based on the ingredients, I honestly expected a more unbalanced drink. There's plenty of lemon, but gin adds a nice bitterness, enhancing the other flavors. You'll also get a subtle floral note, but not a long aftertaste. Now we get into what the world knows as the Cosmo. This cocktail is claimed to have been created by many bartenders, from Cheryl Cook, Patrick Mitten, Toby Cicchini and Melissa Huffsmith, and the King Cocktail, Del de Graff. Several of them also claimed Madonna was spotted drinking one at their bar in New York, which made it popular around town. But we all know how it reached worldwide fame when four friends made it a staple on the hit TV series Sex and the City in the late 90s. The Cosmopolitan became so popular it now has even its own international day, May 7th, but I doubt you'll see it written on many calendars out there. Now let's backtrack a bit to the late 80s in New York's The Odeon Bar when Toby Cicchini came across a drink popular in San Francisco. It was made with cheap vodka, Rose's lime juice and Rose's grenadine. Toby called it a ghastly drink, so he reconstructed it. It was 1988 and Absolute just came out with their new citrus flavored vodka. He also used sweetened cranberry juice and borrowed fresh lime juice and control from their well-known fresh margaritas. He used the 2 1 1 1 ratio, so I'm starting with 1.5 ounce or 45 ml of citron vodka. Follow that with 3 quarters of an ounce or 22.5 ml of control, something they'd be using in their margaritas. Same goes for freshly squeezed lime juice, which is not something that comes to mind first when thinking of cocktails in the 80s. And lastly, equal amount, 3 quarters of an ounce or 22.5 ml of sweetened cranberry juice. Add ice and shake. The Cosmopolitan was often found on martini lists during the 90s. And while it's of course not a martini cocktail, it simply has to be served in a martini glass. That's what you picture when you think of anyone back then drinking it. Add a lemon zest twist and that's it. 
This version of the Cosmo is described by its inventor as, and I quote, kind of a brutal sour, with all the citrusy and tart components. I think that's a fair assessment. The citrus flavored vodka certainly makes a mark on this cocktail, but I still think it would be a bit better with some more sweetness, which is something Del de Graff, author of The Craft of the Cocktail, did with his own cosmopolitan recipe. Another thing he famously did is actually pictured on the cover of that influential cocktail book. He flamed an orange peel over the top of his Cosmo. Dale said he came across the Cosmopolitan at San Francisco and started perfecting his own recipe at his Rainbow Room in Manhattan. It was there that a photo of Madonna with a Cosmo was taken during a Grammy party, making the cocktail and Dale DeGroff a household name. He never claimed to have invented the Cosmopolitan, but his recipe with less lime and more cranberry juice quickly became accepted as a standard. I'll take the liberty to tweak that just a little bit. I'll be using unsweetened 100% cranberry juice for that extra fresh tart flavor. Balance it with a bit of simple syrup, which will also add a bit of texture. And I'm going with lime super juice. I'm of course keeping the flamed orange zest. So for the third time today, let's make the Cosmo. Same as with Toby's recipe, Del de Graff used citron vodka as well, at 1.5 ounce or 45 ml. Next, Contro. De Graff actually tweaked the recipe slightly in his updated new craft of the cocktail to adjust to the change of sweetness and control, so 3 quarters of an ounce or 22.5 ml. Next up, equal amount of pure cranberry juice. Anytime you're using cranberry juice, look for the highest amount of cranberries in the juice, but it will probably be sweetened to balance the extreme tartness of red cranberries. Here we'll balance the tartness with the addition of quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of simple syrup. And for lime juice, I'm adding quarter of an ounce or 7.5 ml of lime super juice. Not a lot, but you know it packs a lot of lime flavor. Lastly, since we're making it our own way, two drops of saline solution to boost and brighten up all the flavors. The same as with the other two. Add ice, shake hard and double strain. This time I'm using a chilled Nick and Nora glass, just because I like it more than a martini glass. It's also easier to drink from it without spilling. As for the garnish, we follow Dale with his now signature flamed orange zest twist garnish. Burn the peel against the flame slightly, then express the essential oils through the flame and over the cocktail. That will give the cocktail a nice, lightly smoked orange aroma. You'll get that before the first sip, and it actually enhances the orange liqueur notes, giving it more complexity than it being just a lemon cranberry cocktail. After that, a richer cranberry tartness comes to the front. In short, it's tart, sweet, sour, citrusy and bright. It's a Cosmo. With that, we've made it to the bottom of the glass. Today we'll talk about cranberries, so add a red circular emoji in the comments to show you've made it all the way here. Cranberries originate from North America, with Native Americans first recognizing their medicinal properties. They are packed with antioxidants, vitamin C, fiber and various other nutrients. So here's a shot I don't mind doing. There's also white cranberry juice, made with natural white cranberries, which are harvested before they fully develop, making them milder in flavor and less tart. Maybe that's why the white Cosmo didn't catch on, like the white Negroni Reef. For more old vs new episodes, check out this playlist, including the history of the Negroni. I'll see you next time, friends of cocktails.